Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel, y'all. It is so good to have you guys back. So I wanted to do a very quick chatty video. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit differently, okay? I'm really excited to go ahead and deliver this. Um, I will continue, just quick announcement, I will continue my Zodiacs. I will continue um, my Pick a Card readings. And everything else is in flow. So you guys, um, I felt it was incredibly important to discuss a few tips on how to hold space for someone in crisis. So um, what I noticed uh, throughout life, okay, so I'm just going to start off with this. What I noticed throughout life is that what we struggle with the most is to be understood, right? Right who we are, to be understood. And I wanted to kind of give just a very short but informative video on how to deal with our own pain and how to also help other people who are in a very similar situation. Or, you know, one of the things I've always noticed, you guys, is this feeling of not knowing how to be there for someone else because we all have different love languages, okay? So if you do not know what the love languages are, the five love languages is a quiz, okay? So you can feel free to take the quiz. It's pretty fun, pretty short, and it really allows a level of self-awareness. So this is key for us, okay? Self-awareness. We have to start with ourselves, you guys, before we ever, ever are able to move, you know, in any other direction, because if we know ourselves, then we're able to help other people. So one of the things I want to talk about first, okay, the most important thing about holding space for yourself and others is to know that we all come from a different background, depending on our childhood number one, depending on our cultural background, number two, depending on how we receive. Also, levels of attachment. Are we anxious avoidance? Are we, um, you know, detached? Are we, you know, overly dependent on validation? One shoe does not fit to all, okay? So I thought this was very important because what, you know, throughout my life, I always felt misunderstood. Um, I searched for several identities, okay, uh, growing up, and I never felt like people really understood my pain, and I was always searching for something that I always had within myself. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, my loves, is because it is so key, and it is so essential to bring a higher level of awareness so we can heal ourselves without blocking our heart chakra. One of the reasons why we are suffering right now is because we are holding on to a lot of pain, and depending on, you know, again, our, our childhood, we we carry it and we keep going. We move forward and we say, well, we got to deal with it and this is what it is. How to hold space for yourself. Tip one. If you are in a position where you're, you're dealing with a crisis, you're in a lot of pain, there's a lot of trauma um, and you're carrying this heavy burden, the first thing to do is is to figure out what it is that you need first. And I'm talking about in the middle of your your world spinning. I know this is really hard to do, but if you can set the intention and, and say out loud, what is it that I need right now? Ask the creator, ask your angels to guide you in the right direction, and I promise you they will. Just like other deities, and just like there's always rituals, you guys, to invite, uh, you know, your your specific pantheon or whoever you're working with, okay? Um, we have to set a ritual, right? Like in Santeria, you you set up an altar for whoever you're going to work with. Shango, okay? Yemaya, Ochosi, right? So you, you have to kind of 
you know, bring offerings. You have to show them respect. You have to show them that you pray to them. You ask. This is the same as when you are praying to the Lord or when you are just praying to, you know, the universe. You have to give yourself time, you guys. If you guys are going through something and you're in a state of panic, the first thing to do is to separate yourself from the trigger. Separate yourself if you can. Go take a walk. This is for all ages. I worked with high school kids. I, I am a case manager. I was. So, you know, these are things, techniques that adults need as well because we are all walking around with our inner child wounded if we are not healing it, okay? So first thing is first. Separate yourself from the trigger. Ask yourself, what do I need right now? If you are in a you know, very emotional state, let yourself feel it, you guys. You know, if you are anything like me, I'm going to give you quick examples <clears throat> because I want to help you guys, okay? I'm not really big on talking about myself, but um, I've always needed control. I've always needed an environment where I needed to be in control of my emotions. Number one, growing up in a household where, uh, you know, emotions were weakness, you, you didn't have time to show emotion. If you showed emotion, it was like, we don't have time for that, right? So growing up in almost what felt like a pressure cooker of having to maintain balance and in a space of seriousness and having to push forward and survival, I learned how to cope with my pain. And I learned how to control my emotions to the point where um, it, it became kind of like a military, like I created a military in my life since childhood. Okay. So if you guys have a similar experience, again, understand that when you are helping other people, your friends, this is important, you guys, your friends, your family, not everyone responds the same way because we do not respond to trauma the same way. Healing isn't linear. We all have different experiences that have shaped us into who we are today. And also we are all very, um, you know, in a different phase of our life. Some are more mature, some are less mature, some go towards ego, some, you know. When it comes to your healing, set your ego aside foundation. If you are going to help someone like you want to help yourself, you cannot let your ego get in the way. That means if they do not re reciprocate your, your um, energy, don't, don't, you know, there's a lot of, well, I remove the I from the equation, my loves. One of the least, for instance, for me, the reason why I want to give you a quick example is because I know there is at least one person in this world who, who can relate to this or maybe hopefully more than one so we can heal together. Because life has been the way that it has been, I have always controlled everything in my life. Everything was about control, right? Specifically my emotions. I talked about this in the last video. Now, a very specific example of how I work. When I go through my pain as an adult in my 30-ish, is, you know, 30 plus years, I do not want people to overreact. I do not do well to overreaction because I have a lot of pride. My ancestors were very prideful people. We're warriors. We don't, we don't cry. We, we, we battle, you know, but when we do cry, we have an expectation. And I say we, cause my ancestors are very present with me. We have an expectation. That's them. They're really proud of me. There's an expectation to stand tall, right? So um, this is how I've lived my life. And so one of the best things that people have ever done for me and one of the many things of why I admire men so much specifically, this is why I've always, you guys, it's so funny. I've always wanted to have male friends. 
because they were always so in control. They always knew what to say. They always had this very stoic, I'm going to be there for you, protective energy that I, I never received from women, you know? Um, I always felt judged by women. I always felt... Um, well, if that was me, and then I was that too, if, because that's all I, it wasn't out of, you know, not wanting to be there for someone. It was, that was all I knew, right? Like to share my experiences from a place of ego of I, right? And I remember watching and observing how men hold space for women. And it's so interesting or the masculine, there's so much silence. And I thought to myself, who is going to feel comforted in that situation, right? And it is comforting. And, you know, a really good friend of mine, a Scorpio, I remember I was on my high horse. He asked for support. <laughs> and I was very young. I was, you know, early, early 20s. And he asked me about advice about a woman. And I said, well, you know what? I was really hard on him because I was projecting my pain from my missing father. So every man that asked me, I had this, this superiority about it. Like, okay, well, I got power now, you know? So there's, you guys, I want you to pay attention to this. This is really important. And so he asked me for advice and he said something good. It was very humbling. He said, if I called you to get your judgment, I wouldn't have called you. I'm asking for support. Whew. Humbling, humbling, humbling. You know why? Because he was asking for me to hold space when he was moving through a very clear emotional time. And I was on my high horse and I had a lot of ego. And I felt it was a perfect time on a subconscious level to project my issues around my father. We do this, you guys. We do this. And I see it every day because of the field that I'm going to go into. Going back to holding space. I had a, a Gemini friend. She did the best thing she did for me. I was in an overwhelming state of, of chaos. I needed to cry, and for me, crying always felt like it was stripping away my power. So I held in all this pain, right? And I'm sharing this with you guys because, again, I want you to pinpoint what is your love language? What makes you feel comforted? If you don't know what makes you feel comforted, you are going to feel lost. You're going to constantly feel like no one understands you and you're going to have a lot of conflict around your friendships because we're all projecting what we think, our fears of judgment, our fears of our pain. And so we assume, oh, they're judging me. Is that true? Or is that your fear? Right? Um, I worked... Um, at a makeup counter a little bit, you know, a few years ago. And uh, my coworker, I was going through, like, literally, there was Saturn return. I was just, like, chaotic. She did the best thing she could do, like most Geminis do, hold space in such a beautiful way. You know, we took a break, and I said, listen. I want you guys to listen to this. Listen. I'm emotional right now. I need you to just let me cry. Let me cry. Please do not overdo it. I don't need you to hug me. I don't need you to, you know, tell me everything's going to be okay. Please do not overreact to my tears. And she said, okay. So I just said, please just stand there with me. Because I just needed someone to just be there, you know. Cried for about two seconds. And she did great. It wasn't like, are you okay? Okay oh my gosh, I get it. I understand you because I've been through, I didn't want to hear that because no one understands what I've been through except for me. Okay. So again, right, this is my way of receptivity and she held space and she didn't make a big deal. And she just at the end, her way of kind of lightening it up, I just said, okay, I'm ready to go back in there, finish my shift, let's do it. And we we like joked around at something that we saw across the street and and that was what I needed. You guys, 
Hold space by understanding what you need and express it to people. This is the best way. And the reason why I bring this up, you guys, is the pain in my heart at our suicide rate because people are not vocalizing their pain or they're walking around super hard, like their heart is so closed. They'll see somebody fall on the street and they don't care. They don't give two Fs. That hurts me. It hurts to see the, 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 the world that we're in where everyone is so effing just oblivious. No one cares. I'm just like a blind man when I was 25 years old. I'm on the train, 25, still working out my own stuff. Blind man gets on the, on the train, hits his face on, on the pole trying to find his way. He, he forgot his cane. I think he was homeless. Do you think anyone got up for this man? We are on public transportation with a few, a few, what, 50 people? Who knows how many people? Did anybody care about this man hitting his face on the pole because he couldn't see? No. And this isn't about me saving the day, you guys. I saw him, I grabbed his hand, and I said, can you please get up? There is no reason to see people. In, like, I, it's beyond me, right? <laughs> so here I am. You guys, ask, please speak, okay? Please speak. This is, this is a great time to just, if you need something, say it. And don't expect people to run. Like I said, don't expect people to coddle you because we are all unhealed on some different level, okay? Generationally, some of your parents will not be able to hold space and it's not that they don't love you. They don't know how to hold space for their own pain. We have unhealed people having babies all day long. People who are trying to still be mothers and fathers and hey, doing the best they can, right? Hold space, know who you are, please speak up. Do not give up on yourself, okay? That's how you hold space for yourself. Find active ways to make changes. There is no one in this world who is going to save you like you can save you. If you are suffering from depression, anxiety, get a therapist. If a therapist is not your flow, find an outlet. But the one thing I want you guys to really acknowledge is how you are projecting your pain. Because what I see is a lot of this. It ain't my problem. How you, you see, like, <laughs> it's not my problem. That's not my family. But you know what? This person has the family. And if that was your family, would it matter? Holding space for other people. This is a big one. We get offended. This is a big one, you guys. We get so offended. When we try and we say, well, I tried to be there for them and they didn't reciprocate. Did you hear my story in the beginning with Scorpio? That was an effort for him. I was supposed to be a friend and I, he obviously did not want my judgment. He wanted support. And I remember I asked him, well, what is the best way to support? I like, I'm trying to figure it out. He said, sometimes you have to just, the best thing you can do is put your hand on someone's shoulder and be in silence. Get yourself out of the picture. This whole, I no. believe it or not, people, people will make it seem the energy will seem as if they want you to say, I But in a moment of crisis and trauma, please 
just try to hold space and that means sit with them in silence put your hand on their shoulder if they need a hug hug them if they need an i love you i love you whatever you're comfortable with but the last thing you want to do is to have someone crying in front of you going through something and they're like you know what i know and then all of a sudden it's about them or about you Please be a good friend to people out here because we need support. We need to support each other. And I am I feel so strongly about this, okay? And this is how I'm healing with you guys too. There's so many different ways. Ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Ego, pride is the biggest, biggest dark energy that you can carry into a relationship with a lover, with a best friend, with anybody, you're making assumptions that people are going to judge you or reject you. That is the worst. This is why we don't live out our dreams. And then we get resentful. Oh, the world don't love us. God don't love us. You know, are we stripping ourselves from our ego? Right? Say, how can I support you if you need to hold space for somebody? If they say, I don't know try things without making it about you please because the pain that i see all of us walking through and i'm talking about my youth my kids that i worked with at such a young age okay some were doing drugs that they did not have any business doing at 15 because they are numbing themselves and you know what the biggest thing my kids said I don't have anybody that understands me. They're not speaking their love language. You see what I'm saying? We need to stop that because this is our generation, you guys, our kids. We have to look out for our children. And I'm not talking about just your kids. I'm talking about our community out here. Our community. It matters because when we rise, when we heal, we can heal someone else. So with that being said, ask, right? If someone is crying and they are out of control or they're like, just, just sit with them, take a deep breath. Remember, it's not about you. And figure out what they need by just being in the moment. You have 30 minutes to be there for somebody that is your best friend, your family, someone. And I know it's hard because I'm very selfish with my time, you guys. And I'm very selective with my friendships. It took me five years to finally and vice versa with my Libra. We are like this. You know how long it took us? About five years. And we are just now coming into a sisterhood where we are hugging each other. And where we are being vulnerable. It took us that long, both of us. Because when you love someone and you see that they are a good friend, you move through the phases, a good lover, a whatever. You move through these phases with them. You know why? Because since I've known her in my early 20s, she's older than me. She has never let me down. And I've never asked for more than, than very, very basic things. That was what was important to me. Are you loyal to me on the most basic? Like my move. I didn't even have to ask her. She had boxes ready for me. That to me was a million dollars. Okay? And it was consistent. It's always been consistent. And there's not one day that I don't see her that she doesn't say, how are you feeling? Someone comes to you, try. If they don't want to hug, like personally, I don't do well with that. Don't, don't overreact to my tears. Just sit with me in silence. Put your hand on my thigh or my shoulder or don't, you know, I don't need, I just need space. Like, like hold space, acknowledge that I'm there. And let me move through it. Figure out what your person needs. 
your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend. And if that doesn't work, try again. Stay present unless they say, I need, I need space. Figure it out. How can I support you? That doesn't work. They're crying. Okay, the best, just sit with them. Okay, sit with them. It's uncomfortable. But you know what? I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. You know what? It's really uncomfortable to see someone cry because it triggers your own stuff. And then you feel uncomfortable because it happens to me. <laughs> right? My reaction to someone crying, I get very stoic. I don't show emotion. I go like this. I do not show my emotion. Does it mean I'm not hurting for the person? No. I'm uncomfortable with my own vulnerability. So this is how I respond. But my love is present. So look at the best qualities in people. And I'm going to leave you at this. And the reason why I say it's really hard, and this was life-changing for me, because my neighbor, my lovely neighbor that I just met downstairs, held space for me for about an hour, and I was crying about my most recent events. I didn't know him. This was the first time I ever met him in my life. But as a healer, as an upcoming healer that he is, Pisces, held space for me. He did not know me. He did not know. He didn't owe me anything. I didn't owe him anything. And he took an hour and not once did he, he look away. Not once did he act like he had to leave. And you know what? That was my expectation. <laughs> it was late. It's eight o'clock. I'm sure he's hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> but we talked about what happened to me. And, you know, it, it's something that's, that's been, you know, worked on every day, something I'm healing from every day. And he, he didn't move. He held space. That is a blessing because in my head throughout my life, I was never, I never felt worthy of someone's attention to hear my pain because they don't know how to react to it. They look away, they minimize it. You know, I come from a very strong family where you just don't talk about it. You don't talk about your pain and you just suck it up. What he did for me was life-changing. I want you guys to please acknowledge that if your friend, if your boyfriend, if your girl, what it doesn't matter. If they are not responding the way you think, it's not always because they are not appreciative. We are all trying to figure it out. Help people by speaking and saying, this is what I need. Yeah. Okay. Very quick video. I want to say I love you. And this was very important for me because we are all trying to understand each other. So instead of perpetuating a lot of this hate and negativity around being misunderstood because we all love each other. I mean, at the end of the day, we all want to be validated. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be loved, but there's miscommunications around what we need as individuals. What your story is, isn't somebody else's. So don't try to tell them, I know how you feel because after years of understanding that is, it, it, you're stripping away from personal power here from them. Okay. Please let's, let's all just be good to each other out there. I love you. Thank you for being here. Mwah. And I hope this was helpful. Bye.